and we'll go ahead and get the presentation started. Okay. According to my screen, this is working. You should see a blue screen. Someone add, thank you, Dave. Um, so welcome, September 29th. This is um, Buffalo and I have a waterkeeper in participation with Erie County's virtual public meeting number one on um, our Buffalo Blue Way site on um, Erie County Park lands within the Buffalo River. So just quick introductions. Once again, I'm Katherine Winkler. I'm a program manager of Waterkeeper. Also on the line today, we have Ron and Jen from Waterkeeper and um, also Jean. Jean will be um, jumping in a little bit later, so you'll get a chance to meet her. And we also have Kristen Rodano from the county who, um, if she wants to chime in at any point, she can. So just general housekeeping, this meeting is being recorded. Um, we've muted you all. There's not many of us, so any questions towards the end of the conversation, we'll go ahead and unmute people so that we can have more of a general discussion. There will be some poll questions during the meeting, so if you have any, um, you know, reservations about answering those poll questions, just skip them. There's, there's really nothing, you know, we're not tracking you. Um, the purpose of tonight's meeting, um, we're going to do a quick presentation of the Buffalo River where we were, what's been done, and where we're going. And I'll do a quick overview of the Red Jacket Riverfront Park, and then we'll gather the comments and feedback from you. So tonight's meeting is really about what do you want to see at Red Jacket Riverfront Park? This is your park, it's in your community, and we want to make improvements to the park that fit you and your needs, as well as you know making the park a generally safer environment. So let's get started. Um, so Jean will throw up a, a poll question or two, and then we'll move on from there. So poll number one, how familiar are you with the history and restoration of the Buffalo River? Number two, how close do you live to the Buffalo River? Number three, what is your age range? So you can tell these questions are just for us to gauge, you know, what do you know? Do you live anywhere near there? Is this your community park? That kind of stuff. So feel free to chime in. Okay. So it appears that everyone has voted. So I'll just go ahead and share the results with you. Can you all see the results? on your screen, great. So how familiar are you with the history and restoration of the Buffalo River? Very familiar? Great, you're gonna really hate the first five minutes of this presentation then, but maybe there's some nice pictures for you to take a look at. How close do you live to the Buffalo River? A highway would it be involved? So tonight's meeting, we don't have anyone particularly from within that neighborhood, um, but we really do love everyone's feedback. So your age range, well, we're across the board, 25 to 60 plus. Sounds good to me. All right. Close that out and we can move on. So just a quick overview of where we were with the Buffalo River. Um, Buffalo River never existed. It was an uninhabited marsh infested with mosquitoes. The photo you see on the, on the screen here is a view of Lake and Fort Erie from Buffalo Creek. Buffalo River didn't exist. It was Buffalo Creek. We went ahead, it was a site for temporary Indian hunting and fishing camps and it was established as a trading post in 1758. So basically it's nothing like what you see right now. Then the Erie Canal came. By 1820, approximately 2,000 people lived in the village of Buffalo. As you can see, the villagers took it upon themselves to fight for Buffalo being the terminus of the Erie Canal. The other one, it, it was either gonna be Buffalo or Black Rock. Buffalo had a nice quiet harbor and the villagers really took it upon themselves to dredge it, get in there and do it and make a play for why Buffalo <clears throat> should be that terminus. In 1821, we were selected and that brought 
an entire change to the area. By the 1900s, grain mills and development along the river was packed. There were boats spreading up and down the river to the point where you could walk across the river without ever getting your feet wet. Um, the times were a booming and the population was exploding. Um, but also in the 1900s, you know, people were saying that the Buffalo River, and I'm just going to read this to you. I know nobody loves being read to, but it's just a really great quote. Through the heart of Buffalo wanders the city's most whimsical thoroughfare, Buffalo River. It is sluggish, inky stream, choked with chemical poisons, littered with trash. But it is an artery of commerce and industry. Through almost unknown to the people of Buffalo, except that they cross it here and there on the bridge. Along with ugly banks lies wasteland you can buy for 20,000 an acre if the operator happens to be in a mood for selling. I think this quote really shows exactly what we've been fighting for for years. The river was chemically polluted. People did not know what was there. It was an artery of commerce and it still is. So it was always, it was always a troubled river from the beginning. Um, the 1950s really brought a change um, due to the opening of the St. Lawrence Seaway. The Buffalo River was no longer the main hub for grain activity. And that's when heavy activity took place. So heavy manufacturing, particularly dye stuff, chemical plants, steel plants took over the river. Um, these are a couple of pictures on the left is the Catherine Street Peninsula, um, which is one of our habitat restoration sites. And on the right is Buffalo Color Corporation on your on the bottom part of the screen, which made the which was the number one producer of indigo dye in the world at that point and Republic Steel just to the north. So it was a very highly impacted river at this point because all of these manufacturers and um, operations were using water from the Buffalo River in their process. But they were also using the Buffalo River to dispose of their waste. So any of the chemical contamination, any of the runoff went directly into the Buffalo River where it either flowed into Lake Erie or it sunk to the bottom. The 1960s. This is a, it was when the Buffalo River was declared biologically dead. It, the Buffalo River is a pulse of holding basin. Well, that's true. It was basically still stagnant and now it was full of chemical pollution. So that's the depressing part of the, um, the presentation. And now we'll have another poll. Poll time. coming. Do you remember when the Buffalo River looked like this? Were you around? Did you hear stories? You know, were, were your family members part of any of those industries that lived there? Wow. So it looks like two of you. Yes, you did. One of you didn't. But I think there's pros and cons to both of that. Um, the passion that comes from restoring the Buffalo River really, for me, these pictures show a lot. So, right. So what's been done? Well, great news. Buffalo wasn't the only river that was, you know, sluggish and polluted and devoid of all life. 43 areas of concern within the US and Canada were declared areas of concern by the International Joint Commission in the 1980s. Buffalo River was listed primarily due to the contaminated sediment at the bottom of the river and the loss of habitat. So there was a really long process from the 1980s until about 2010, where the New York State DEC was really focused on restoring the lands around the Buffalo River. So there was an economic downturn 
there was no more heavy industry. The steel mills all left, and we were left with inactive hazardous waste sites that needed to be cleaned up, not only to restore the land, but to prevent that from going into the waterways. One of the main things that we realized that had to be done was to clean up the sediments in the Buffalo River. So the Buffalo River contaminated sed sediment was dredged and or capped between 2011 and 2016. Over a million cubic yards of contaminated sediment were removed from that river. The photo you see is an actual photo. That's the South Park Bridge. On the right hand side would be Tesla at this point. Left hand side would be Buffalo Color. So this operation went on for nearly five years. It was multi-phase, multi-partnered all the way through. And we were able to get the sediments to a point, and they're still being tested occasionally, but to a point where they're no longer recontaminating the river water or the inhabitants of the waterways. Once we were done with that, and kind of simultaneously, we started restoring habitat along the Buffalo River. So this map shows you a site, um, the different sites within the Buffalo <laughs> that were restored by different entities. So not everyone, every site was able to be taken on by one person. Our goal was to restore 25% of the AOC shoreline. That's a huge lift. That's 6.2 miles of river only within an urban waterway with privately owned land, hardened banks, who knows what in the, in the process. So Waterkeeper, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, the Legacy Act, Erie County, EPA all took on different projects. And when you total these all up, we exceeded that 25% goal. And that is something I am very proud to say. And the Buffalo River no longer looks like a barren wasteland. There's habitat, the, there's in-water habitat, upland habitat, softened shorelines. The animals are coming back. You know, we're seeing mink on the Buffalo River. That does not happen. That did not happen. You saw maybe a carp and a raccoon um, 10, 15 years ago. And I've been involved with this process for a really long time. So with the Buffalo River dredging and the restoring of the habitat really brought on economic development within this, within this zone. And those are a couple of pictures for you to take a look at. Yes, Buffalo is a big brewing company. So Resurgence Brewing Company opened up on Ohio Street. Riverworks is right on the banks of the Buffalo River. Ellicott Development and um, Davarino Companies both built um, luxury-ish um, condos along the Buffalo waterfront as well. Those were all sold out. Um, definitely have a great new population moving into that area. Um, and you can also see on the upper right hand picture that development was built with a setback to allow for habitat and a softened shoreline so that they're not building right to the edge. That was always a huge concern that we, what we had. Um, so there has been a lot of change from where we were with first a marsh, second industries and dirtiness to this place that people really want to go. And that brings us to where are we going? Well, the Buffalo River is now a recreational waterway on a working river. We need to keep in mind that the Buffalo River is continuously, I would say, on average, one large lake freighter comes into the Buffalo River. That picture on the right was taken last week. That's the, um, the Capri, which was delivering, ooh, I can't remember what it was. That one might have been um, cement to the barge. And on the left hand side is a photo that was taken several years ago. It's a pretty, pretty famous photo at this time, but there is so much recreation going on in the river. I remember going out there and doing water sampling, dating myself um, 15 years ago as a student, 20 years ago as a student, and I was the only person anywhere near there. And now it's the traffic is overwhelming. So this area of the Buffalo River, especially near Riverworks, and I would say almost to uh, maybe Ohio Street is really chock filled with people who want to come to the Buffalo River now. 
and we want to build off of that. Um, so we have one more poll for you now based on this, and then we'll go into where we're actually going, what we want to do and why we're here tonight. Okay. So have you visited the Buffalo River for recreational purposes in the last year? All right, it's unanimous. Every single one of you has visited the Buffalo River for recreational purposes in the last year. For tomorrow's meeting, I'm gonna ask a question just kind of occurred to me 10 years ago, would you have visited that Buffalo River for recreational purposes? I'm guessing the answer is no. I wouldn't have and, oh, Dave would have, okay. Well, oh, Dave, you're an anomaly. Oh, you too, Greg? All right, so maybe it's just me. I so. So where are we going? Waterkeeper a couple years ago received a grant from New York State directly out of the, um, the governor's budget to develop what is being called the Buffalo Blue Way. The Buffalo Blue Way is a series of connected natural spaces along the waterway for people to get out and enjoy the river. So there's a whole Buffalo Blue Way website. It gives you all of the different sites that are on the Buffalo Blue Way, what you can do there, what you can see. You can go ahead and plan your trip. These are all the existing sites. So we go all the way from Wilkinson Point, Riverworks, and you'll see the rest of them in a little bit. But there were some sites like Buffalo Riverworks, Wilkinson Point, Mutual Riverfront Park, they were all established areas, but not many people knew about them or the access was not ideal. So Waterkeeper worked with the landowners, um, some private, some semi-government, some government to make upgrades at those sites. So I think our most visible at this point is the one at uh, Riverworks. So Riverworks, as we all know, is constantly booming. Waterkeeper put up a, um, that's our paddle in the bottom right-hand photo. So that marker is going to be at every site to designate where you're on the water, that this is a Buffalo Blue Way site. There's amenities here. You can come, you can launch, you can get out. You can, it's a safe, you know, launch and egress and all of that. On the bottom left, that's a photo of some kayak racks that we um, installed. Those are free to use. So if you're paddling down the river and you're getting tired and you need a snack, you can pull over, lock your kayak up, go away for a little while, come back on. And the thing I'm most excited about and the most proud of at Buffalo Riverworks is the photo in the middle. That is the first fully accessible launch area on the Buffalo River. So a lot of the launches have the rollers and that's really great. Um, I can't launch a kayak by, you know, putting in the water and stepping into it. But this one also includes that bench in the middle. So that bench expands. So you put your kayak down, you can be, you can sit on or be placed on that bench and you can scoot over, use the overhanging bar and lower yourself into the kayak yourself. So this has been proven. We had some wheelchair bound participants come and use it for one of their events and they were all able to place themselves in the kayak alone and get themselves back out. So this was a very, I believe a very proud moment that um, we were able to give back to the community and really make sure that all of these sites are as ADA accessible as possible. It's not always possible, but here we were able to go above and beyond. The next site we'll look at that is an existing site is Wilkinson Point. This one's out on the outer harbor. This site ex um, existed. We went ahead and put up some safety notifications and our Blue Way paddle. And now this is included as part of our map so that people know that they can launch there and then go back into the Buffalo River. Really not promoting people 
um, kayaking too much up into the lake um, unless they're experienced paddlers. And then Neutral Riverfront Park, that one we put a paddle in as well. That is a very well um, utilized kayak launch in South Buffalo. The streets are usually jam packed, with people trying to get in there. There's roller launches. It's a, it's a really great place um, in order for people to go as well. So those were the easy ones. Now we're, we're starting to work on the, these sites. Um, the sites you're seeing on this list, Heritage Discovery Center, which is owned and operated by Heritage Discovery Center on the former Buffalo Color um, site. So it's a remediated brownfield. Ohio Street Boat Launch, we've done habitat restoration there before. It's right in the middle of Ohio Street, which is booming. Both those condos I showed you, um, that's where those people live and it's constantly being used. Higgins Park, which is actually Thomas F. Higgins Natural Habitat Restoration Park, but it wouldn't fit on the slide, um, just had a, a, a whole overhaul within the last few years. Red Jacket Riverfront Park and Seneca Bluffs as well. Who will go into those a little bit more? Here it is Discovery Center. The, the top photo that, that bridge you see is the South Park Bridge. You're looking north in this photo. And on the bottom right, it's just an artist rendering of our potential enhancements. So we're really not only focusing on kayakers. I am not a kayaker. And anyone on the call from Waterkeeper knows that that is just not my jam. It, it make, yeah. So, but that bench with that lady sitting, that's me. I want to be out on the river and I want to be watching other people and I want to be enjoying, you know, the water and just the, the surrounding and having this weird serene area within the heart of the city. It's just, so this is what we're looking at. We're actually in about the 90% design phase for this one. Um, our hope is to go out to bid and have this being worked on next year. There are some issues right now due to COVID and um, the economic nature of everything that's going on. So this one might be on hold for a little longer, but I'm never giving up on this one. There's some great fishing piers and access and just a beautiful site. Um, this is the Ohio Street Boat Lounge, current conditions. It is a really great natural habitat area. If you go there, it is definitely full of beautiful wildflowers and pathways and just areas that you can sit down and relax. But there are some issues with the site, including the parking area, um, the access to the kayak launch. So those are things that we really wanted to address. We're also feeling and getting people the feeling of what this site was. So in the bottom right hand photo, just across the street, you can kind of see that little path. That is a former rail line that used to go all the way to the water. So the pathways within that's going to evoke that feeling of you know, the, pre, the pre restoration, that industrial phase. Um, we're also including not only just the upgraded <clears throat> kayak launch, but we're going to be doing a fishing pier. Used to be a fishing pier back in the day and it was super popular. There's people fishing there all the time. So we're going to reinstall that, use some nice strong materials, get people back out there. There's benches, there's seating areas. There's just great opportunity at the site. And just to the left of that photo and just to the right of that photo is just people. That part is constantly being used by people. So we really want to give them that sense of place. And we want people who are paddling down the river to know that that site is available, that they can come up, that they can, you know, use that site. So this site is also one of those things that there's definitely even challenges. There's no electricity on that site. There no, the property owner doesn't want us to run lines or we don't have the funding to run lines. There's no water. So there will never be public bathrooms. There will never be, you know, those type of facilities. There's not going to be a kiosk for getting a soda on the river, but we are installing sol solar bollard lights in order to provide some lighting. Um, during that. So this project is actually at about the 99% design phase. We have money in hand for construction. It should be going out to bid within the next optimistic me, um, three weeks. I would say I'll have this one out to bid and we'll, or we'll have this one out to bid and we'll be able to select a contractor. Work, if everything works out the way I want it to, where could we get at the site this fall? 
So this one's pretty exciting. So those are the two that have really been, really been keeping us up all night. But hey, let's throw a couple more in just because it's fun. So these are three sites that we're lumping together and we're considering the Erie County Park sites. These three sites, Higgins Park, Red Jacket Park, and Seneca Bluffs are all owned and operated by Erie County um, Parks and Department of Environment and Planning. These are really great sites up and down the river and they've all gone through, I would say significant habitat restoration, shoreline work, publicity within the last few years. And these parks are, they're neighborhood parks is the way that I look at them. And that is why for these three projects alone, we really wanted to have three public meetings to reach out to the community and find out what they want at their parks. So instead of lumping them all together, they're all in, they're all really, really close together, but they're all in very different neighborhoods. So tonight we're going to focus on Higgins, oh, I'm sorry, Red Jacket Riverfront Park, and then I believe tomorrow, yes, tomorrow is Higgins Park, followed by Seneca Bluffs Natural Habitat Park. So diving right in, Red Jacket Riverfront Park. This park, to me is one of the hidden gems along the Buffalo River. If I want to go and be not by anyone and be surrounded by nature and the Buffalo River, this is where I go. You find Smith Street, not Smith Street. So South Park, make a right or a left on the Smith Street, drive all the way to the end until you can't drive any further. And there it is. It's nearly seven acres of land. There's ponds, there's, it, it's just an incredible site. So pull time. So let's be honest, before hearing about tonight's meeting, did you know that Red Jacket River Pond Park existed? And I'll caveat that with, it used to be called Smith Street Park. So if you knew Smith Street Park existed, that one works for you too. Oh. Look at that, we're great. 100% of you knew that this park existed. That's pretty impressive. I know some people that live just off of South Park, a little bit further away, but they had it, you know, they're just not used to it. You can't, it's kind of in an area isolated by itself, but it is absolutely beautiful. So Red Jacket, has amazing views of the Buffalo River. There's an overlook point, there's a walkway, there's, it's just nature in this one. Um, so the current site amenities include hiking trails, a pond wetland that was installed or created, oh boy, at this point, probably about 15 years ago. There's incredible wildlife. The photography there is amazing. Even for me, with me and my little camera, like. You really get some amazing shots there. So this is the part of the park. There's benches scattered through that you can just walk around, sit, listen. But there's also opportunities to do active recreation at this site. There's currently a paddle sport launch and that's shown in the upper left. It is a, it's a graded area that is currently filled with pretty much millings. It was self-created. It was never designed. It's not ADA accessible. And the shoreline there actually will not warrant an ADA accessible launch. There's bird watching. Those are just mallard ducks, but that's the only picture I could find. But there, there's hawks flying around. There's mink jumping up and down. You know, it's just incredible. And then, you know, it's, there's fishing along that shoreline and just just throwing it in there on the bottom right that is me in a kayak and I am smiling but you know I think that was the last time I had to go in there but behind me um, there's two gentlemen fishing off of that pier. I was down there probably at this point three weeks ago between 11 and 1 o'clock that parking lot was jammed and it was jammed with people on their lunch breaks who I watch get their fishing poles out of their cars, still in their work clothes, go over and just start fishing. People perching on rocks and, rocks and eating their lunch. It is an incredible area for that neighborhood. 
So what are the opportunities for a Jacket Riverfront Park? This is a page directly out of the Erie County Parks Master Plan update, which was in 20, I apologize, it was either 15 or 18. And this points out Red Jacket Riverfront Park. I blew up these the, on the left hand side of the master plan recommendations on the right hand side of the master plan highlights. I blew them up. So master plan highlights, you know, really focusing on the nature and the natural system. This is a natural habitat park. This park will never be clear cut so that we can put in, you know, massive infrastructure and piers and docks and, you know, hard concrete. This is this is nature. This is a unique opportunity within the city of Buffalo to do that. But they're also including recommendations like interpretive signage. You get there and you kind of are in the parking lot, but you're like, should I go down that pathway? I'm not really sure. Um, and there's also, there's a security risk at that park. It is very isolated and um, the installation of security cameras has been done recently in that area and you know, crime is always going to be an issue at any sort of remote location, but the more people you have coming to a site and actively using it for good reasons, the less nefarious activity you're going to have. So we really want to encourage passive activities, promote positive use of the park, and the activities that were pointed out in this highlight was kayaking, public art installation, fishing, neighborhood gatherings, just everything to bring the neighborhood to this area. Some of the recommendations was to repair and re improve the rails at the overlook. So there's this beautiful overlook area and there's a railing picture in the top right. It's green wood. It's been there since the first time I ever visited that park. And it is in disrepair. It's in more disrepair recently because there was a an accident at the park. So some of the railing was taken out. So you know, we can update that, promote public access through trails, overlooks, and possible kayak launches was another recommendation. Okay, we could do that if that's what people want. The current kayak launch, like I said, is just some, some millings in a sloped area. What would make that more attractive? How would that make it easier to be used? Um, so then there's some other things about artwork and increasing connective connectivity to other habitat parks. That's what we want to do with the Buffalo Blue Way. So the Buffalo Blue Way really is hitting so many of these, these recommendations that Erie County put together in their master plan many years ago. We want to kind of be able to connect people not only through the waterways, but from their community. If you live on South Park, well, just go down South Park, make a left and you're there. You know, we just have to get people to know that this is this park is there and be able to enjoy it the way that they want to, the way that you want to, I apologize. This is all about you and what you want to see at your park. So that really takes us into the next part of the presentation where I am no longer just speaking at you, but what we want is your feedback. So we're gonna put up a series of poll questions about what you would like to see at the park and. Jean is really going to take over from this point. Jean, you can introduce yourself when, whenever you feel the need to unmute. And then we'll go through the poll questions. And I'll leave it up to Jean, but I really do think that we can, at this point, unmute everyone and really get those comments mm -hmm. flowing if we want to. So thank you, everyone, for listening to my, let's see, 30, ooh, 35 minute presentation on where we were, what we've done, and where we're going. Thank you so much, Catherine. It's awesome. Um, so I'm Jean Biter, also with Buffalo Niagara Waterkeeper. I'm the project manager for the Buffalo Blue Way and just really um, so happy to have you all here on the call. So as Catherine mentioned, this is really your opportunity to share with us, you know, what you would like to see at Red Jacket. As Catherine mentioned, uh, we'll be doing another public meeting tomorrow for Higgins Park, and then the third and final public meeting on Thursday for Seneca Bluffs. So you're welcome to join us at those two meetings as well if you've got some comments and feedback um, and or just wanna hear what's, um, what's going on at those parks also. So for tonight, we're gonna focus on Red Jacket and I have um, allowed you all to be, to be able to unmute yourselves. So, 
um, you are welcome to unmute yourself. Um, if you wanna share some feedback, share some comments. We also have a poll up. Um, so if you wanna go through that poll, I will launch that at this time. And you're welcome to fill out that poll. And I think, Catherine, can you advance one more slide? Does it have sure my can. contact information? Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so you can go in the chat box if you don't feel like talking out loud and we can either read your questions or your comments out loud. Um, you can do the poll if you would like, and then we'll just leave up this slide. This is my contact information. So as you know, the days go on, you're like, oh, I, I do have something I want to say at Red Jack about Red Jacket. Um, you can just feel free to email me as well. So yeah, the floor is open. And I'm not actually seeing people fill out the poll. So Catherine, are you seeing people fill out the poll? No, but it might take, um, I think oh, I have to vote on album before and I then submit. Yeah. Okay, all right. It's a longer one. <laughs> yeah. So I think when in terms of how often do you visit the park that we were just trying to get a sense of usage. Um, you know, you, you all are spending an hour of your evening on a Tuesday to be with us. Is it because you visit the park? Is it for other reasons? Why is it? I mean, like I was mentioning, I really do love this park, but I don't go there very often. And, <laughs> Catherine, I, I can't see the poll. I was working on it and then it disappeared. Huh. Probably just me, but I might have touched something. I don't know. Uh, let's see. I got thank you and contact information. <laughs> uh, let me end the poll. I'll start it over again. Relaunch it. <clears throat> we'll try it again. We can also just go through the questions and if people want to share their own experiences about the park. I mean, at this point, we have just a handful. We have a handful of waterkeeper staff. We've got Kristen from the county on the call as well. Um, and Kristen, I welcome you to, you know, share any any insights about Red Jacket as well. Please feel free to unmute yourself and do that. Um, and then we have a, a handful of community members. So if you all if you feel comfortable chatting, um, we would love to hear from you. So we're just asking, you know, who do you go to the park with? What time of the day do you go to the park? Um, you know, how do you use the park if you do go to Red Jacket? Um, what are some of your concerns at the park? And then what would you like to see at the park? And particularly if we can, I know it's a lot to just unmute yourself and talk about, but really yeah. what would you like to see at the park? That's huge because we're going to be going into a design process where we need to focus our, our landscape architects, our engineers on really making improvements to this park in all of the parks that we're going to be talking about this week. And we really want to know what else do you want, what else do you want to see? Um, there are constraints there, you know, there, lighting is definitely a concern. I can see somebody voted for that. Um, improved parking, there's physical constraints within this park. Unfortunately, it's a very narrow area. It's between a fast moving waterway with a steep slope and a railroad worm that um, cannot really be altered. So, you know, we can't increase the parking, but maybe we can figure out a way to make the parking better. Um, improving the kayak and canoe launch. Yeah, that one, that's, it seems like a given. I think everybody really wants to see that there. It's really a great site for that. Um, security cameras, there are some in existence um, at the park currently, but we can look into doing some updates. So not all of these recommendations and the comments that we're going to be receiving for these sites can be taken care of by just one project. So that's definitely why Kristen is on the line as well, so that she can receive your feedback and 
you know, work with the county to to make additional improvements at the site as time and funding is available. I don't I don't live near that park, but um, I did have I did want to talk about it a little bit. I um one of my biggest concerns about areas further downstream and even a couple areas upstream is um, I don't know how safe they are for a lot of the small boat access. You know, like I worry about kayakers turning over or whatever, but I worry about it a lot less in this section of the river. Um, and so like, to me, like one of the reasons, not just because, you know, I would put a kayak in there, but I mean, I think like that's a part of the river that gets a little less um, speedboat traffic and has softer shores for people to get in and out. Um, now I know on, you know on a weekend day, people are still going to come up there with big boats. I know that, but um, the further down river you go, the more complicated some of the safety issues become. So it's a really beautiful section of the river, and so you know I kind of think about that way. I, I'm actually curious to know how the neighborhood is handling the parking issues because I'm hearing you know that they're they're probably I know there's safety concerns at, at several of the parks, and, and you know, um, but as far as the parking issue. Are you getting complaints from neighbors? Or are people angry about it? Are they, do they, are they making recommendations themselves? Um, what's happening with that? For this site, I have not heard anything regarding that. I think there's, the park is set back far enough from the neighborhood. So if you go down Smith Street, as soon as you cross that rail line, there's basically no houses there. So people are able to okay. basically double park on both sides of the road if needed. Mm -hmm. um, Mutual Riverfront Park, which is the next closest site, is a parking issue for their neighborhood. And people mm -hmm. are parking on both sides of the road. There's people renting kayaks off the side of the road. It, it's a huge issue. So they did, I believe they did put up no parking areas for there as well. So we don't want to make this worse for the neighborhood. And by being able to improve this site, improve Seneca Bluffs, and potentially create a kayak launch at Higgins Park is gonna spread those people out. So one of the reasons I believe that people use Mutual where there is a, um, a traffic problem is because it is in the quiet zone. So just like you said, Dave, like, I don't wanna launch by Riverworks. I don't wanna deal with that. I wanna go up upriver into the nature and have those soft shore lines where if I have to, I can get out. So by being able to spread that out from one site at Mutual to potentially four, maybe even five sites in the up area, river area, we'll be able to push that out as well. So not sure if that really answers your questions, but we haven't had any complaints about parking at this site yet. So where, where, I was just looking at a map on another computer, where do people park then? There's a parking lot there. It, it right, there is one, but I'm hearing during the middle of the day, the, play, the park is packed, right? So where do they go? Back into the neighborhood along Smith Street or? Yep, they'll park along Smith Street um, okay. by the railroad, um, by the berm. There's like foundations from where the railroad bridge used to be. Um, Pretty much up until the railroad tracks is really not neighborhood. Um, mm -hmm. The house is stopped just before the tracks. Even on the busiest day, this this is Kristen from Erie County. Even on the busiest day, I've never seen parking that's gone past railroad tracks, like towards South Park. Okay, that's that's good until it gets popular, <laughs> even more <laughs> popular. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The the problem with mutual. Uh, because we found out about it looking to put in a little farther downstream may have been at red jacket and then somebody told us oh there's this brand new put in at the park so we checked it out and yeah it was gorgeous and as more development around there has come about and more people found out about it that's why it's now so popular and packed at um this the the park we're talking about now we've looked at putting in there but it was often so full of 
we'll call it river debris that just floated up there that is like, eh, let's go back to mutual. <laughs> um, but, and we've seen people fishing there and walking. We didn't know there was trails per se. Mm -hmm. um, now that the weather's turning and we won't be going in the water, yeah. I think we're gonna go down there and, and check out the trails. If you do develop it, put in a, some kind of kayak launch, it will get more people. You may have an issue with parking. You'll have an issue of no bathroom facilities as, mm -hmm. as more people use it. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be an issue. And if, if you're going to put a launch in, if you're going to do something to increase parking, composting toilets had better be on that list or it, it's, you're going to have other issues. People. Let's just say, <laughs> yeah, Bush number one and Bush number two. <laughs> so if you, if you were across the, and I, and I, I, now I don't really know what I'm talking about. So if you, do we have any opportunities across the way? Or are we trying to not go across the way? We've got some beautiful space over there. I don't know what the access is like and I don't know how dangerous or other, or other concerns about property over there. So any other opportunities? Across the river from? Yeah, yeah. That's Concrete Central. So we can't go back there? Correct. Okay. All of it's Concrete Central? Yes. Really? Yeah, it's owned by two different owners, but yeah. Part of it's owned by the city of Buffalo and most of it's owned by CSX. Oh, that's the CSX issue. Yeah. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Okay, yes, thank you for reminding me of that, that joyous thing. Thank you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Like you're there. saying, Dave, like that, and debris, and I believe I believe your name's Greg, right? But yeah, debris is always going to be an issue, and that's something we're constantly fighting in that river because I can tell that you you've been you spent many hours on the river, but it flows both ways. So sometimes it's flowing downstream, sometimes it's flowing upstream. So it's really hard to keep the debris from going into those launches. So you know, improved maintenance, anything that we can do at oh, at the Ohio Street Boat Launch, we're actually putting in debris deflectors um, on both sides of the launch to try to keep that out because I don't know if anyone's ever been to the Ohio Street Boat Launch, it does get filled up and you can't use it. So mm -hmm. Mutual Riverfront has a giant boom in front of that to keep that debris out, which is very helpful, but it's also a maintenance issue. You need somebody who's there cleaning that out, installing, taking it, I'm taking it out in the winter and all of that. So there's definitely different considerations we have to take into account based on the fact that this is a natural habitat park. I don't, from what I've been interpreting, it will never be a more of a formal launch. If anything, it's going to be a nature-based slope into the waterway, but how can we improve that to make it just a little bit more hospitable for everyone? Actually, once you get past that debris, it's a really good place to launch because there's a nice little shelf that you can kind of walk out onto and then hop in and push your way out. Um, and I say this like I'm a kayaking expert, but I have <laughs> got out there once, so I've seen it a lot from the band. It's not bad there. Taking, putting it and taking it out isn't bad there. I mean, it's... Um, I think for some... I think the kayak thing is a little harder, but... Um, yeah. Yeah. That's not bad. So we have about my clocks are all wrong in this house. It looks like we have about eight minutes, nine minutes left. But anyone for, has for tomorrow, I have a question for tomorrow. Are you going to go through the same presentation the next two nights? Yes. Sir. Okay. Okay. Yep. All the way up until where I start talking about the park specifics. So. Okay. So tomorrow night will be Higgins Park, which used to be the Bailey Avenue Peninsula. 
there's an informal kayak launch, trails, all of that, but there's a huge opportunity to do something on um, the other side of Casanova Creek, which is still part of the park, but that might be a great opportunity for overlooks or you know, a nice kayak launch, something along those yeah. lines. And then on Thursday, Seneca Bluffs, which is just an ama another amazing area that's tucked into a really strong neighborhood in in South Buffalo, and you know that receives a lot of traffic and walking traffic, I guess you could say. So um, we're really looking forward to presenting to the community and finding out what they want to do. Our timeline for all of these really, like I mentioned, I would like to get something started at Red Jacket this season. That fence has been uh, demolished, at least half of it. So we want to get that at least, so it's not a fence, it's a guardrail. So we want to at least replace that guardrail this year. Um, there was a vandalism of that, right? Um, we're not really sure. Somehow a car accidentally went through the railing could have been an accident, could have been on purpose, never really quite know, um, but we're gonna put up a steel. Our goal is to put up some sort of heavier duty guardrail there and you know start working on the launch and all of that this year. Most likely it won't be ready until next year. Seneca Bluffs, we're really accelerating this one. We're looking to hire a consultant to design that project within the next month or so with construction in the spring or maybe, I don't know, probably late fall of next year and Higgins along the same timeline. So our goal, my goal, sometimes I'm an overachiever, but I really would like to see these projects done in the next two to three years. This is something we have funding for. This is something we have community support for. We have municipal support for. So tell us what you want tell us what you want at these sites and we can it, it can happen so you know this isn't a project where it's like tell me what you want and then i'll put it on on the table like tell me what you want if we can make it happen it's going to happen within the next two years who who owns the red jacket area is that city county yep it's a county site so it's owned and operated by um erie county they're um Kind of split between parks and the department of environment and planning so what are the official hours of the park it's open dawn to dusk dusk yeah dawn to dusk okay so why do we need lights always a great question but um there we might not um in the in the more populated areas we were concerned about not having lighting in case of emergency egress so if someone's on the river too long, they don't know, they didn't have a chance to get back to the park. How do they find where that launch is? How do they get back to their car? So the park is never locked. So people can always get in and out, but right. you know, we're not encouraging people to be there after dark, but one or two bollards to potentially light the way to help for safety reasons, you know, isn't something that would be unheard of. But well, you said that getting electricity there would be an issue. Mm -hmm. So, okay, one solar light. Yep. Yeah, I mean, they make they actually make some pretty amazing LED solar lights now. Okay. And vandalism is a problem. So we always, in any park that is not, in any area that is not actively maintained by the owner or that there's not a physical presence, vandalism will always be an issue. So... You throw up a couple lights and maybe the nefarious activity diminishes. You know, people aren't out there tagging rocks um, you know, in, in the broad daylight. So lighting always kind of helps. I think the lighting will help with um, the reach of the camera and darker oh. hours too. Since there is, even though the parks, you know, dawn to dusk there's still a lot of um, foot traffic and vehicular traffic through there after hours and those lights might help deter people once they see the lights and the security camera present 
Well, the lights yeah. maybe. The lights, the lights, you could have some lights on all the time. You have some lights be motion activated too, right? Right. Yeah. Do you have to tell them there's a camera there? <laughs> it's right there when you pull in uh, it's on a big post of the solar panel. So you might, you might miss it or you might not miss it when you pull in. Okay. There is a sign there that says um, it's being made, um, uh, monitored by camera, but it's also been tagged. <laughs> well, that, that's like the signs on the throughway that says this section monitored by aircraft. Yeah. Yeah. But to be completely honest, I've never seen the camera. That's how oblivious maybe I am, but I would, or maybe it's well hidden. We shall see. But it's hard to tell that there's cameras on that big solar post. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. Okay. So if anyone has any additional comments or thoughts, we really do appreciate you um, taking your time tonight to, to provide feedback and listen to us. But anything that comes up in the next couple of days, just email Jean. It doesn't have to be a formal letter, just some bullet points. What do you want to see there? You know, just get that out there. If you, if you don't want to come to the next two night meetings, because as Dave mentioned, it's going to be the similar presentation up until a certain point. All of these are being recorded. You can watch them on maybe Friday, maybe next week sometime. Fast forward through all my talking and just really see what we're proposing for the parks. Provide those comments. You know, we don't wanna make this a chore for you, but we just wanna know what people want so that we can get this done and done well. You know, that's my goal. So. Jean, do you have anything else or anyone else want to provide any final thoughts? I'll just say hello. Yuri Frustration here. I joined in late, so I hope to be on time tomorrow. Yeah. So, so you have two more opportunities, Yuri. So tomorrow um, for Higgins and then your Seneca Bluffs will be on Thursday. So don't yeah, miss that just one. On the Red Jacket, uh, you may or may not know the, the, uh, the launch that's there. Um, was installed by myself and Peg Overdorf uh, some yep. years ago. I don't know if you have plans on uh, just doing a little uh, maintenance there, but yeah, definitely something that we're looking at. You know, doing some top dressing, making it a little bit more secure, that kind of a thing. I can see us being able to do that. All right, see you tomorrow. Thank you, everyone. Well, thanks so Catherine much. And Jean, thank you so thank you. much. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your evening, and we'll see some of you tomorrow and Thursday. Take care, thanks, everyone. Bye-bye.